There are several different web servers and API authentication models. We'll take a look at several of these from a high level. The oldest model is just passing credentials over to the API, and then the API returns information. And this model is obsolete, but it's still popular, so we cover it. Starts off with the browser and a business endpoint. And the business endpoint or API has the information that we need. The browser sends over the credentials. Essentially, it's a username and a password, but it could be called some other name, like a client ID, a client secret, some kind of other words with API mixed in there. But the bottom line is it's an identifier and a credential, a username and a password. And these are passed with every single request. And then in response, the API responds back with the information. Some of the problems associated with this is there's no session management. The username and password are being passed in every request. And so they're exposed on every request. And if the username and password are compromised, the system is lost entirely. Because instead of losing a session token that will eventually expire, we've lost the entire username and password. And so the only recourse would be to change the password. Also, password authentication is weak because passwords are weak. They're vulnerable to multiple different kinds of attacks, guessing, brute force, interception, phishing, and other types of attacks. And the business endpoint knows what the password is because the user passed the password over to it. An older but more secure model is using client certificates. This model is similar. The browser passes over to the business endpoint a certificate, but this doesn't have the same problems as passing over a password since the private key is not exposed during the transaction. The client is able to prove that they know what the private key is without actually having to pass the private key over to the API. And their certificate vouches for the client. So the API has some trust that the client really is who they say they are whereas anyone could pass a username and a password, so who knows who's at the other side. So this is a more secure method, and it works in a similar way where the API would return back the information after authenticating the client. However, the problem is, is this doesn't scale very well. It works fine as long as there's not very many clients, but as soon as the clients start to become ephemeral, like mobile applications, or the clients become numerous, certificate management, is the Achilles heel of this type of system. A newer model is to have authentication with some type of an access token. In this model, the client passes over to an authentication endpoint, a new API we hadn't seen yet. And in this case, it passes over what's commonly known as a refresh token, but it may go by other names as well. This token is essentially a password, but these are generally cryptographically securely generated and they tend to be very long. And so not only are they somewhat random in nature, but they can be 32 or even 64 bytes in length, making them much better than an ordinary password. This API has some kind of backend that keeps track of the user's permissions and also keeps track of session state. So now the authentication endpoint can pass back to the browser an access token that acts like a session token. And in fact, uh, these often look a lot like session token. Cryptographically secure random numbers, very long, can be easily 64 bytes in length. So now the browser can use this access token to go to the business endpoint, pass the access token over to the endpoint and get the information it needs. But the access tokens are short-lived. They will expire after a session timeout. And also the business endpoint has no idea what the actual credentials are. All it knows is that it has the access token. 
the information gets passed back to the browser. And this model works well, except for it doesn't necessarily plug in with third-party authenticators. So essentially, the uh, because of the back-end session management requirement, the there has to be a relationship between the authenticator API and the business API so they can share that session. But this model is much more secure than the older models and a lot more scalable and is a popular model in use today. There's also authentications using entitlements. In this model, we still pass over some kind of a credential to get logged into the authentication endpoint. And the authentication endpoint, in this case, will generate some type of a bearer token. A lot of times these are formatted as JOTs or JSON web tokens. But now the browser is in possession of the bearer token. And the bearer token is keeping track of how long the token is good for, in other words, the session length. And it's also keeping track of the permissions that the client has. And these are often called claims, at least in the OAuth models. So there's no need for backend session management. Whenever the client wants to access the business endpoint, it passes the bearer token, again, not giving up its credentials. And the business endpoint can read the bearer token, pull out the claims or permissions and to know what the user has access to. So in this model, the big difference is the client is carrying around their permission slip with them. In the refresh token, access token model, the server was keeping track of session state and the permissions. So at this point, the business endpoint can return the information and that information goes back to the browser. One of the popular implementations of this model is the OAuth style models. In this model, we have to be careful about the bearer tokens. They are vulnerable to attack if not implemented correctly. They might be replayed. So the initiated at time and the expiration time has to be reasonably short and forced. Also, there can be information exposed in the claim. Remember, the client has the bearer token in their possession and they can read it. Also, the token could be forged. So there has to be strong signatures and these signatures have to be enforced by the API. Also, the signatures themselves can be weak using password-based signature schemes like the HS-256 where if anyone figures out what the shared password is, they would be able to forge that. So it's much better to use certificate-based signatures in order to protect the bearer token from forgeries. And the claims themselves can contain injection attacks because if the uh, client is able to forge the token, they can forge their access. But even if they're not able to forge the token, they can still make up a token that has attacks in it to see if the API is willing to use the claims before checking the signature and possibly open themselves up to injection attacks like SQL injection. So none of the models are perfectly secure. And in fact, uh, they all have different security challenges that developers need to be aware of. But overall, we can certainly discount the credential passing model as being obsolete and stick with one of the other three general models, passing over a client certificate, passing a refresh token to get a short-lived access token, or passing some type of a refresh token in order to get an entitlement.